Okay, so I've made a previous series of videos looking at how Ambu's A-Scope 4 worked for intubating children. And I had it on a brief trial, and I was actually really impressed with it. Um, it worked really well, the image quality was good, but the big limitation it had was the size of tubes it could be used with. So this is a four and a half tube, and this is actually the smallest tube that the scope will fit down. And um, I did make a previous video showing that how you can intubate using the scope, pass a wire down the working channel, remove the scope, pass an airway exchange catheter over the top of the wire, and then pass a tube over the top of the airway exchange catheter. And that allowed you to use a size three tube to intubate this neonatal model. And like I said, there is a previous video of me doing that. But that's quite a cumbersome process um, to do. And given the fact that I have access to smaller uh, reusable bronchoscopes that I can use for intubation, it made it hard to recommend using this for the majority of my patients that were going to need intubated fiber optically. So when I did hear that Ambu had released a new product, although it was designed mainly for the ENT market, um, this slim version of the ENT scope will actually fit down a size three and a half tube. So I was really keen to see whether I could actually use this for intubation. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. I've got a neonatal model, which I'm gonna try and intubate with this three and a half internal diameter tube. And we'll see how we get on with that. Okay, so that's it plugged in. Um, what you'll notice with this, there is no working channel on the device. There's no way to suction with it. So it's just fairly simple controls. There's an up and down button. But you can see there's a pretty good range of movement off the tip of the scope. So we're just going to insert it into this model and we'll have a little look and see what it looks like for image quality. So again, the image quality is looking pretty good at the start. Let's see. There's the laryngeal opening. All the way down. And we're all the way down to the lung. So first impressions, I've got good control of the tip. Um, I've got a nice image quality and it seems to work fairly well. So let's have a look and see how that performs for doing an intubation. So the first thing I'm noticing with this size three and a half tube, I'm not gonna fit in with a connector on. So I'm gonna take the connector off. And with the connector off, the tube feeds over fairly well. Now, what would be interesting to see how well, uh, would it actually go over a size three tube? Probably not going to, but it's nice to try these things yourself. So size three O tube. Yeah, and it definitely doesn't fit. That's very stiff. So three and a half is definitely the limit for this. But the three and a half tube goes over quite nicely. Okay, let's have a look and see how it does for doing an intubation. Now, as I'm getting down towards Karina, one of the things I'm noticing is that I'm running out of space in the mouth here. Although, I'll have to see whether the distance is here are the same as so it would be in a real patient. But as I've got to here, I'm not down as far as, I'm just at Karina. I'm now in my mouth manipulating the scope because the tube is actually too long to allow you to manipulate it. So my first impression is, although diameter wise, this might be okay, it might just be a little short so I'll them to here, I can then pass the tube over the top. There's tube just above Karina, and out we come. Now this may be a bit more of a problem for a nasal intubation. So the tube here is in at, let's see, where's that mark? So that mark is 10, 11, 12, 13. So 13 is actually gonna to be too far in for a patient of this size. So at the lips, so the three kilo baby, nine centimeters at the lips would be fine. So let's pull it back to nine centimeters. I think one of the problems with these models is they're just not anatomically correct. So let's try that. So what we're gonna do 
is we're going to put the scope into this distance. Okay, so I'm just beyond. I'm going to say there is Karina there. I'm now then going to pull the tube back, keeping the scope where it is. Okay, so I'll just come back to that wee mark. So if I was there, which we've said the tube is at Carina, again, you can see at the mouth there's really only a centimetre of space to manipulate the tube. So again, it does seem to be a little in short size. And when we come to the nose, that should be a little bit more of a problem. Because the nose is normally adds a centimetre on in, in most patients this size. So there's the laryngeal opening. Again, I'm sort of, I'm not down as far as I would like to be. There's the little bit I would like, which we're saying is should be about the correct depth of the carina in the distance. And I cannot get the scope down that far with where the tube is. If I advance the tube in a little further, I can then feed from the top, but that's not the way I should be doing this. And again, I'm struggling to feed it. So there's where I would like to have stopped, but I can't do that because when I'm there, everything is in the nose. So although this seems to work from a diameter point of view, lengthwise, it would be nice to have it a little bit longer. Now, if I was to pre-cut the tube, I might be able to use this. So as we said, we're going to do a nasal intubation. This baby, I'm thinking about 10 centimeters at the nose should be right. So there's nothing stopping me having the tube cut at 14 centimeters. That'll be even four centimeters out. So I cut the tube here. And then feed it over the top. Okay, so that's all the way down to where the carina should be. I've still got scope at the nose, and then I can advance the tube over the top. And again, the big problem is just because this model isn't anatomically correct, although I'm said I'm into where I should be, the tube wasn't quite appearing yet and we're all the way in the nose. And that's a big problem with a lot of these models. The distance from the nose and the mouth to where the tube should be is actually too long. But my tube in at, as we said, 10 centimeters of the nose should be right. And we could connect this up again. Okay, I've got a cuff tube somewhere. Let's have a look at it. Now, one of the things we don't like doing with the cuff tubes is having to cut them because there's always a risk of damage in the tube. So we'll have a feed of this on. So this is a size three, size three and a half micro cuff tube. And it is a little bit stiffer. This one I always struggled down towards the end to get the scope to go down. But with it well lubricated and a bit of pressure, it does go down. So there we go, that's just three. From a point of view of doing the intubation with this, I think these are similar lengths to the on cuff tube, so I should have the same problems. And again, I'm into here, but I'm still too f much higher than I would like to be before I'm having to advance the tube off. So I'm having to advance the tube off before I can get in to where I want to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and cut this. So the last tube was cut about 14 centimeters. So I'm also going to cut this one about 14 centimeters. And then feed it over the top. And again, like I've said, this three and a half tube is quite, is definitely harder to feed than the on-cuff tube, although it does go. So that's us down to where I would like to stop and check. And then if I advance the tube. Mm, 
Okay, so that's us all the way down. And one of the things I forgot to factor in is obviously when you cut a tube, you're going to have more difficulty reinserting the ends, and, and that tends not to be a problem with these on-cuff tubes. And particularly you cut it at a nice diagonal, the tube often, the end often goes on without much of a problem. The problem with these cuff tubes is, is, again, it's not a tube I've ever cut in before because in general we don't cut these. But you can see just the difficulty I'm having getting the, the end cap back on. That wasn't easy to do and if you have a kid who's intubated already desaturating, it's not something you want to do at the end. Although the advantage with this micro cuff tube is that you could have this done in advance. So the three and a half micro cuff tube, the little connector that goes on the end, you are able to go straight down. Let's see if we get this through. Okay, so that's us all the way through. Right where we want to be. And then we can advance the tube. Over to where we wanted to go to. And out we go. Again, the other scope is just catching at the end where that wee hub is. Or no, it's actually catching further down. Okay, so trying to put all that together. So I think this is a great device, but no, it's not a perfect device for intubating small babies. And there's a number of reasons for that. It's, and I think the biggest one is it's just not thin enough just yet. Um, this whole business of taking cutting tubes and having to take caps off to allow it to work down to a three and a half tube, um, I don't know if it's worth it over where I can just use a, a standard um, reusable fiber optic scope to do the intubation. I think this just makes the whole intubation process too complex in the fact that you're you're going to have to cut the tube to allow you to do it. You're going to have to take the end off. Again, I've tried this with the end on and it just catches on the way out. So you're going to have to leave the ends off. And then when you do the intubation, you're going to have to try and get the ends back onto the tube again. Whereas if you use the standard reusable fiber optic scope, you're not going to have these issues. Length is the problem and diameter. And again, the fact I can't use this in the majority of my patients who are going to need a size 3 cuff tube, most of them are under 8 months, and I can't use this in the promising science for the future, but not a solution for intubating babies of this size just yet, I think is the summary.